Welcome back to the channel. In this series, we are building a very basic uh, but functional game within code.org's app lab. Okay, a bit like the cookie clicker game, we have to click the blue dot a certain number of times to add one to your score. Okay, we ended the last video by having made the home screen. I've smartened it up a little bit since the previous video. And we added the functionality that when we press the start button, it takes us to our game screen here. Since then, I've just inserted our red dot and blue dot and just added a little bit of placeholder text as well, okay? But up to this point, we've added our code that says, on the event that the press to start is clicks, that's this, we can, we can confirm that with our ID. We set the screen to the game screen, that's this one here. And then we've got a timer, the blue, the blue box, that says after five seconds of this one, go to our score screen, okay? So before we carry on, let's just test that. Press our start button. Five, four, three, two, one. But nothing's happened and we've been given, given an error message down here, okay? Error messages, even though they can be quite intimidating, actually are quite helpful, okay? And what it's saying here is that the screen ID refers to some an ID called score screen, which does not exist, okay? But we know it does because we've got it here. This is our score screen. Okay, and here it is. It's called score screen. So let's come back and check our code. And I'll give you a second to look for the error. Okay, can you see it? On this line here, we've got a space. So we need to make sure that all of our all of our IDs match exactly with what with the way in which they are spelt. Okay. So if we think we've fixed that. Let's just run it again just to retest. So five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Okay, now it's worked this time. Okay, fantastic. So today we want to add two main key functions. Okay, firstly, from our game screen, we wanted to keep a track of our score. So whether we click a blue one and add one or our red dot and deduct one, we wanted to keep a track of our score. And secondly, after each click, we want it to move around the screen. So let's come back to our code, okay? So remember, with things like this, we also want to start with an on event, okay? And almost try to read it like a natural sentence. So on the event that, what do you want it to do? On the event that the blue dot is clicked, add one to our score, okay? So on the event that, let's change this to blue dot is clicked. And now for our score, okay? We're going to use a variable for this, okay? A variable is a bit like a box or a container, okay? And we can add things to it and it will stay there. But the joy of having a variable is that we can vary or change what goes into that container or that box, okay? So we're going to come to variables and we've got a few here which look a little bit similar, okay? So be careful to select the right one. The one that we want to use is this one here, okay? And we're going to say, we're gonna call our variable score Okay, and then leave that there for the moment, okay? One important thing to note before we do this is that in AppLab we need to declare our variable, okay? As in we need to set it up or, or give it a title, okay? And to do that we need this one at the top here, okay? This can go anywhere, but just for neatness, let's pop it at the top, okay? I'm gonna call it score, okay? So this must match this one here. They must match exactly, okay? So we're saying we're creating a variable variable called score, and at the moment, its contents, or the value in our little box, is zero, okay? Because we start the game with a score of zero. If you wanted, wanted the, the, the game to start with a score of, say, five, you can do so, but it makes much more sense to start with zero, okay? So now we're saying, on the event that our blue dot is clicked, we wanted to add one to our variable, okay? So to add, we need to come to our maths functionality, click on, click and drag this one here, drop it in there, and we're going to say add one to our variable called score. So it will increase each time, okay? The other, th the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add the console log, okay? The console log essentially tells us what's going on in the background behind the scenes. So we'll click and drag that down there, okay? Now the second thing we want to do is get it to move each time, okay? So we're going to say, we're going to keep it within this nested block here, come back to here, and we want it to be a set position. Let's find that. There we go. 
And we can drop that just there. It doesn't matter if it's before or after our score. Okay. And we want it to say on the event that the blue dot is clicked, do two things. Firstly, change our score, but also move its position. Okay. So we need to, we need to again make sure that we're referring to the blue dot. And in here, we want it to be a random number. Okay. A random position. So we're going to come to our maths function and click and drag this, this one over here. Okay, so this will refer to your x-axis and the other one will refer to your y-axis, okay? Just take care to drop them in the right boxes. Now, in order to know what numbers to put in here, we can actually hover over, hover over to know the dimensions. So the top left, x and y are zero, are zero, zero and down the bottom right, see how far we can get, let's call it 300, 315 by 450, okay? So we say between one and 315, and between one and 450, okay? So let's try it. We're gonna press our start button, press our blue button, and we expect it to move. But it hasn't. Why has it done that? And what's actually happened is, we've actually gone slightly off the screen, okay? So actually we need to bring these numbers down a little bit so that our blue dot that stays within the confines of our screen, as in it refers to the middle of that circle. Actually, bring, let's bring it down to 280 and 400. Oh, 400, okay. Let's always remember, make one change, then test it before you do anything else. So let's run again, press start, and now it stays within our screen much better okay the other thing we'll do next is do the do the exact same thing but now we want it so that every time we run whether we press the blue one or the red one both buttons move so we're going to need to duplicate this block but now with the blue button and then once we've got once you've done that duplicate all of this but this time for the red button and to fast forward, forward a little bit there we have it okay so I've duplicated this block, but everything in this block is now for the blue dot. Everything in this block is for the red dot. But in both circumstances, with the blue dot, we add one. With the red dot, we deduct one. But both times, we, we could, we've said it so that both the blue dot and the red dot, will, red dot will move every single time. Okay, so let's test it. Press run, press start. And whether we press the red one or the blue one, both of them now move. Okay, 